Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. The brother of a little boy who died of starvation is testifying in his stepmother's trial. Miranda Cosares is charged with injury to a child. She is accused of withholding food from four-year-old Benjamin Cervera. Our Daniel Labara has been in the courtroom at Cervera's 12-year-old brother testifies. So Daniel, how did the jury react to that testimony from a 12-year-old? Well, they've been pretty emotional as Benjamin's brother describes what he says he saw. I saw three jurors wipe away tears. Now, we're not naming his brother because he is a minor. He is 12 years old. He says Miranda Casares would feed him and her own son, but not Benjamin. The 12 year old says this would happen when their dad wasn't around. He describes seeing Casares force Benjamin to swallow hot sauce and hand sanitizer. He even says Casares would make Benjamin drink toilet water. Benjamin's brother says when he tried sharing food with Benjamin, Casares would take it away. Now he says he was told to keep this a secret and coming up, you're gonna hear from the 12 year old and why he says he felt like he couldn't say anything. We're live from the Galena Reeves Justice Center, Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look outside with live cam, a beautiful day out there, another one and such a nice chilly start as well. Yeah, it's picture perfect. Uh, just the way you would uh, want to start a day. We had temperatures in the 50s, clear skies. It was, uh, yes, cool this morning, and now we're going to see temperatures warm up uh, pretty rapidly this afternoon into the 80s. Let me show you that uh, that turnaround, that swing in temperatures. We officially started off at 52 this morning, and by this afternoon, we'll make it up to 83 for a 31 degree swing, always indicative of dry air. We certainly have plenty of that to go around. So yeah, it's nice out there. We've got temperatures right now, 79 degrees. Uh, so we're all, all already pretty close to 80. Uh, 80 in New Braunfels, 79 in Seguin, 73 Bernie. That's the cool spot with a northerly breeze anywhere from five to 15, but certainly not as strong as those winds were yesterday. What do our rain chances look like as we go forward? Well, we have no chances of rain today, but uh, we will have some chances of storms as we get into next week. As we get a little closer to Fiesta, we're gonna discuss that and your seven day forecast. Plus, we'll look at some pictures on KSAC Connect. We got a lot coming in because it's a special day. More on that in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thank you so much, Justin. The stage being set for a possible legal battle between Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez and Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. The Bear County Commissioner's Court says Gonzalez can use $50,000 to hire outside counsel to fight a proposed new rule from the state's AG's office if it goes through. That rule would require the district and the county attorneys to provide additional reporting to the AG's office when it comes to cases where the local DA and the county attorneys don't indict people who commit violent crimes. The state AG says these issues are in the public interest. Under the rule, if the local DAs and the county attorneys don't comply, the state AG can then get rid of them. The Barrow County DA's office did release a statement. It says in part, quote, complying with the attorney general's proposed rules would cost local taxpayers an exorbitant amount of money. Pulling prosecutors out of courtrooms to review years old cases in conference rooms makes no sense, especially when we are seeing tremendous success in prosecution of cases. Add to that. The requirement that we send sensitive information regarding victims to a state agency who can then release the information at will, and you will have a recipe for disaster, end quote. Today, the world's biggest summit happening right here in San Antonio. It is focused on a genetic condition that causes tumors to grow on nerves. The short name for the condition is NF, and it affects one in every 2,000 people. And all those patients who are affected are born with it, but some don't show symptoms until they're young as adults. The NF Summit will be today through Saturday. We have more information for you on our website, kset.com. It's time. The Party with a Purpose now just getting a week underway as your Fiesta station. We are hosting special watch parties exclusively for KSAT insiders. Scan the QR code, get your tickets for a Battle of Flowers party. We're also hosting one for Flambeau. Again, get your tickets now. And if you really want to be a part of the action, like right in the middle of it, how about riding on a float? We've got a contest going on right now on KSAT.com. 
If you're the winner, you're going to have to work on your float wave because you'll be on a float in the Battle of Flowers Parade. If you want to enter, scan the QR code right there on your screen and tell us what you love about the Battle of Flowers Parade to enter for a chance to ride on a float and show us your shoes. The Battle of Flowers Parade coming up Friday, April 26th. And of course, if you miss out on any of these opportunities, you don't want to deal with the Fiesta traffic. You can get covered on all Fiesta events. We're going to have the coverage for you during the parades as well. We'll broadcast those parades live right here on KSAT 12 and KSAT 12 Plus. And check this out. Niosa Cruz hard at work. They've been working on flowers and now eggs. The team working to make 60 thousand cascarones for the popular fiesta event we've got a look this morning at that our photojournalist misael gomez bringing us this gift he's so sweet we've got some eggs for you They're yeah absolutely we can gorgeous. buy these at niosa of course the proceeds go to the conservation society it all goes toward a good cause and I was told if I crack one over your head, then I got to clean up the mess. So That's I'm not going to crack one too. over your head. So but I, well, you're, but you're if safe. I crack one over your head, you have to no, clean up the mess. No, you have to clean up the mess. Look at, look at the colors. Look at the way these. We're ready for Fiesta. By the way, if you do get one cracked over your head, it's supposed to mean good luck for you. All right. So did you know that? No, so I didn't know that. there you go. There's a Fiesta it is that time. trivia. These are, so you you can find these in the stores and everywhere. But again, you can buy them at Very Niosa, nice. and it all goes to a good cause. Those are almost too good looking to crack. You just did. I did it though. Hey, Spurs go flat on the road. Nobody pick them up. They couldn't get a ride anywhere. Nobody could drive this thing last night. We'll show you what happened in OKC coming up. Coming up tonight on the night beat, you're gonna meet a woman who has battled diabetes and cancer, and she wants you to hear her story. We had the pleasure of meeting Virginia Cortez. In the last eight years, she found out she had diabetes and cancer. She is a warrior and she's learned things about her health that could help you. For one, did you know that people with diabetes have a stronger chance of getting cancer? Had I not had diabetes, could I have prevented the cancer? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Once again, tonight on the night, you can hear more from Virginia and an endocrinologist who tells us how we can stay healthy. The 12th annual San Antonio Book Festival returning to downtown this weekend and all week we're hearing from some of the authors attending that festival. Jenny Brown is well known here in San Antonio and across the state. She's a professor of creative writing and English at Trinity University. From 2016 to 2018, Brown served as the city of San Antonio's Poet Laureate which is an honorary position focusing on promoting literacy and poetic arts in our community. During that time period, she also served as a poet laureate for the state of Texas from 2016, rather 2017 to 2018. Brown's gonna be attending this year's festival for the first time as an author, however. She's gonna be talking on panels and meeting with festival attendees interested in learning about her book, which is called Texas Being. A state of poems. It includes 45 poems. Brown hopes her book will appeal to people of all ages. The San Antonio Book Festival happening on Saturday, April 13th at the Central Library at the UTSA Southwest Campus. The day-long family-friendly event is free for all attendees. You can learn more information about the authors attending and the festival by heading to our website, KSAT Communities section on KSAT.com. This time tomorrow, our KSAT community partners will be hosting a phone bank benefiting Project MEND. The goal of the phone bank is to raise money for medical mobility equipment like scooters and wheelchairs. During the phone bank, you can also ask about the Viva Mobility Resource Fair happening this coming Sunday on April 14th at Morgan Sports Complex. Again, the phone bank tomorrow from noon until 7. We'll have the number to call tomorrow on the news at noon. And April is Autism Acceptance Month, our Autism Awareness Month. And next week, we'll be hosting a case at Community Town Hall called Understanding Autism. Guests will be joining Tiffany Huertas to answer any questions you may have, help them raise awareness and promote acceptance. You can tune into the Town Hall next Tuesday at 2 in the afternoon on KSAT. Dot com, KSAT Plus, or the KSAT YouTube channel. The town hall will then be followed by the Walk for Autism. That comes up on the 20th at Palo Alto College. All right, everybody, go outside, take a picture, send it to your friends up north. 
over on the East Coast. Ooh. Even the people on the West Coast. See how pretty we can have weather? True. For like, you know, four or five days out of the year. It's okay. We'll take <laughs> but it. But we'll take it. Uh, we know things are going to be heating up. So, yes, you got to enjoy these next couple days because it is feeling great out there. The aquifer is up a tenth of a foot today, 638.8. Still rising a little bit from those rains. And in the pollen count, oak is down today, but it's still high. 1,450 molds are moderate at 690. Pecan is low at 80. The weekend brings more humidity. Yes, some rain chances next week as we head towards Fiesta. We'll look at that forecast for you. Coming up. What is National Pet Day? Is that what it is? Is that right? Something like that? I don't know. I think it's National Gorgeous Weather Day. Oh, okay. well, that too. It's National yeah. Pet Day. Uh, oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> national, you, you can pet the shoulder of your favorite meteorologist. You scratch him behind his ears. <laughs> After providing weather like this, I'm going to take all the credit I can to this baby. Anyway, yes, National Pet Day. Show your pet pics. Scan that QR code. And we've got a couple of pet pics. If you had your pet, what pet would you be showing? I had a pet. I you got a cat, you. but and two okay. horses. But I, I, the horses—they're not pets. They just do what they want. You can't get them <laughs> to roll over or anything. But you would show them pictures anyway, I right? Show the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have the the uh, unofficial Ksat therapy dog, Swiffer. Oh. oh. Swiffer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Also, along with that, just to kind of tease ahead, we showed our Fiesta mm -hmm. medal the other day, uh -huh. and wait you see today, a local artist has taken that and has turned it into this most gorgeous work, work of, of art, art okay. that we are going to be displaying permanently on our set. And also, we're talking about uh, hair styles for Fiesta. Fiesta hair. And okay. the beautiful Jackie here is showing up her hairstyle. But wait to see how she shows her Fiesta medals. You're yeah. going to love wow. this. We're not going to yes. reveal no, what's we're back not. here but yet. This is, this is so cool. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank can't you wait, guys. Can't wait for that. Yeah, the other day he revealed the uh, the SA Live medal and it was like some food was made. I know, just, they made a just, beautiful dessert out yeah. of this. Well, you were here that day. Yeah, yeah. I was. Okay. All right, so Justin, your dog, come on. Where's your pick? Oh, I Penny. showed it earlier at 9 o'clock, Miss Penny. Yeah. Yeah, for National Pet Day. And then I uh, implored folks, uh, just as SA Live is doing there, to send in pictures of their pets. And you guys are coming through in the clutch uh, here we are this is uh this is just one of very many that we got but uh this is fanta he's very sweet uh yes we've got cats dogs rabbits so fluffy uh yes fanta very very cute uh keep the pictures coming we're going to show as many as we possibly can but if you uh, don't see yours uh, it's also going to be on our website case at connect uh you can go look at everyone's pet uh, and check out all the pictures we got to talk about reservoir levels. Medina's at 2.8%, still doing bad, but we've been focusing in on Canyon Lake. It's still falling, 59%. These are low numbers for Canyon, which is typically a pretty steady level lake. Six months ago, it was at 64.5%. A year ago, 76.3%. Uh, 22 feet down. We're in a world of hurt here. We need some more rain. Even, you know, the, la the rain we got the last couple of days has not done much to improve our aquifer or our lakes or our rivers speaking of stream flow there along the oasis close to zero there's no flow there it doesn't mean there's not water but it's not flowing that's well below average same for the frio it's at nine cubic feet per second well below average there is a little water there uh, none though in the medina river at least it's not flowing uh, there around castroville we go up to the guadalupe 12 cubic feet per second that's a low number uh, it's uh, well below average, and then of course the Comal always does a little bit better on the other side of the dam, but uh, still not a great number, 146 cubic feet per second when the median flow is 311. So this time of year, you typically see these averages come up because we do often get some spring rains, but we need more. Uh, we'll keep you posted on uh, where we stand there as far as the lakes and rivers go. Outside, blue skies, no rain today. Temperatures are very comfortable. 79 degrees at the airport, 80 in New Braunfels, 70s, Seguin, Bernie, and Kerrville. We've got a northerly wind, 5 to 15, but it won't be all that strong today. And our forecast calls for temperatures right around 83 this afternoon. Sunny skies all day long. 80 at 7 o'clock, 75 at 8 p.m. We dip into the 60s tonight and back into the 50s by tomorrow morning. So we'll have another morning where it'll be just a little chilly, not cold, but chilly. 
uh, then that ends pretty quickly because moisture comes back in and we start seeing warmer mornings ahead. Big storm system across the east coast. Severe weather still ongoing across parts of Florida. They got hammered yesterday. They're getting hammered again today. Jacksonville down to Orlando and then rain for a large portion of the eastern half of the nation. That storm system will move away and we'll watch another one develop on the west coast. This one's going to move inland and take more of a northerly track, unfortunately for us, because it uh, will be far enough away to where it takes most of the weather to our north. This is where severe weather will be possible on Monday afternoon, but you'll notice it's well north of San Antonio. Now this front could generate a shower or maybe a storm for us Tuesday morning, but we'll be on the very tail end of things. So I'm not too optimistic about rain chances on Tuesday in this front. Uh, just kind of scrapes by doesn't give us a lot. So as far as rain chances go, we're going to put in a 20% chance on Tuesday. Very, very small chance on Wednesday. And we bring rain chances up just a little bit Thursday. It looks like middle to end of next week, things get a little more active. And I know Fiesta gets underway. Don't uh, be too disheartened just yet because things can change week out, uh, likely will. Doesn't mean everything's going to be a rain out. So we'll, we'll keep you posted. We're going to be updating the Fiesta forecast as often as we can. 84 Saturday, 84 Sunday, lots of clouds. And uh, there's that small rain chance on Tuesday with a high of 86. Sounds good. Thank you, Justin. Hey, Spurs just trying to get to the end of this thing. Bad night last night. On the other hand, the Brahmas are off like a stampede to start their season. Hey, the Spurs going up against one of the top teams in the West, OKC. How about this list of non-combatants last night? Wimby, Keldon, Jeremy, D Devin, and CD. They were there, but they just didn't play. The Thunder scored the first 11 points and never looked back. Trey Jones with a big ball movement, and that's nice. We'll take that feed to Zach Collins for the jam. But OKC went on to score the last 19 points of the first quarter. They led 34-11 second quarter. Shea Gilgis Alexander showing off his skills. He had a nice drive, and then there's a nice slam at the other end from Champigny. Spurs were down 68-35 at halftime. Third quarter, Devontae Graham feeds Joaquin Gray. He passes it to C.D. Sissoko. Sissoko. We hadn't seen this guy enough, man. You got to start playing with the Spurs more often so we can pronounce his name more. Sissoko. There you go. See, up from the G League. And the Spurs were down by as many as 42, though. They dropped the final road game of the season, 127 to 89. Zach Collins led the Spurs with 20. Spurs will next host the Denver Nuggets. That's coming up Friday night at 7 o'clock, next to last game of the season. And the San Antonio Brahmas led the XFL division in the United Football League with a perfect 22-0 record. That's in UFL. Last Saturday, they picked up their huge 2019 comeback win at the Memphis Showboats. The Brahmas were down 16-0 at the start of the fourth quarter, and that's when the Brahmas kicked into gear, leave Memphis with a win. Quarterback Chase Gerbers loves just how the Brahmas never gave up in that one. Yeah, I think it shows a lot about this team, you know, for for a team that hasn't been together for a while. You know, you had four weeks of training camp, really. So we've been together for six, seven weeks uh, to not break apart and really come together in times of adversity. You know, you're down 16-0 and, you know, a lot of people can start pointing fingers, yelling at each other. Uh, but I think, you know, what we showed, you know, being able to stick together and then ultimately get it rolling um, at the end, I think, you know, shows a lot about this team. That's not how you start, it's how you finish. The Brahmas will host the St. Louis Battle Hawks. That's coming up this Sunday in the Dome at 2 o'clock. Brahmas are offering a buy one, get one free discount on tickets for this game. Fans can visit all Brahma's social media platforms to access that special ticket offer. A 15 combined for one. That is how Trinity University is looking at their different athletic programs. But throughout the year, they're all working together to achieve just one goal. Top 25 status in the Director's Cup standings. The Director's Cup is a comprehensive point system that ranks athletic performance across the board at each college. And after being in only Division III school to send eight programs of its kind to NCAA tournaments this past fall and winter, the Tigers sit in 19th. Despite all the success, Trinity still flies under the radar. But women's basketball head coach Cameron Hill doesn't mind it. I'm a big fan of that. I, I like the if you know, you know. I think we see a ton of schools that have dominant programs 
but not dominant departments. I wouldn't have stayed here all these years if I wasn't absolutely loving, you know, being at Trinity. Every day you look forward to coming to work. We have the funding to get out and play a national schedule. We have the funding to get out and recruit. And there's no reason you can't be successful in any of our sports. Trinity's winning culture stems from continuity in the athletic department, which is why alumni keep coming back, like football coach Jeremy Urban, who had a long NFL career after graduating from Trinity. For me, it's being able to sit down and look parents and, and young men in the eye and authentically say, you know, there, there is no difference in terms of intensity and what the game meant for me when I was you know, getting ready for a Super Bowl or playing in a Super Bowl compared to, to running up the steps as a player here in a national semifinals game or winning playoff games at home the last two years. Um, you know, football's football. Um, we have phenomenal competitors. Um, and just, I think, being able to say, you know, I love being here. And that winning trend continues over there, Trinity. Four of their spring programs are currently nationally ranked. Great kids, great coaches, great staff, and that's what you get. Great athletic department. Yep. All right, Uber's making some changes with your safety in mind. We're going to walk through the update to the app and how you can take your safety into your own hands. Also coming up today, new at five, a lot of kids are, and parents alike reach for Lunchables for a quick snack or meal. But Consumer Reports is sounding the alarm that those prepackaged kits pack some concerning health risks. What they contain that could have you rethinking the convenience today at five after Entertainment Tonight. Bottle it and sell it. If we could. All right, so <laughs> this cool. is the weather we want next Thursday. Can we keep uh -oh. it for a week, please? So far, I haven't had a, a lot of luck putting in orders. Uh, <laughs> the eclipse and... Oh, I was going to bring that up. Uh, yeah, I, don't even, I shouldn't even bring that up, actually. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens with the Fiesta. There's a chance we could see some rain as Fiesta gets underway, but we're still uh, a week away. Things are going to change, okay? Uh, and it is that time of year. So there's always a chance for thunderstorms. But we're going to be positive. Uh, first, let me show you the time lapse uh, that we saw this morning. It was a beautiful sunrise, beautiful start to the day. And uh, we've been dealing with blue skies all day long. This afternoon will be really pretty gorgeous. We'll have temperatures in the 70s, 80s. And as we look at the big picture across the country, this is on the back side of a storm system. The one that, of course, brought us severe weather is now bringing severe weather to the east coast, including parts of Florida. Let me zoom in a little bit closer here. And you can see a nice line of storms. Tornado watch box still in effect, and this probably gets extended down to the south and east. But Orlando, Daytona Beach, those are areas that are getting hit hard by severe storms right now. That same line, basically, that came through Texas. Temperatures. 83 this afternoon here in San Antonio, 78 Bernie, 82 Bandera, 83 in Hondo, 86 in Pearsall. It'll be fairly warm, especially down to the south and west. We got some more pet pictures coming up for you in this half hour. We'll show those to you in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. The so-called gun show loophole will soon be a thing of the past. A newly finalized rule now requires people who sell firearms online and at gun shows to conduct a background check on potential buyers by increasing the requirements needed to obtain a federal firearms license. The White House hopes to better regulate the market. The new rule being finalized just days before the 25th anniversary of the Columbine High School shooting, which the White House notes was carried out in part with firearms that were purchased through that gun show loophole. The finalized rule will go into effect in 30 days. One of the hottest spots for illegal border crossings is now showing signs that it has all but shut down. Some believe it's the efforts by Texas law officers who took over Shelby Park and Eagle Pass, blocking it to those passing from Mexico. Others believe the cool down less the work of Texas to block illegal crossers, but rather more outside factors. KTVT Ken Molestina with a look at where those crossings stand now and why some people believe this newfound trickle of migrants is only temporary. From the ground and from the air, Eagle Pass's Shelby Park, the center of the illegal immigration debate recently, seems considerably more quiet than it's been in some time. Texas Department of Public Safety officials say in the last two years, they'd average anywhere between two to 3,000 illegal border crossings in this area daily. Now, it's down to about five. You're saying, give us our park back. These numbers yes. are down. We want the park back. Yes. 
America Garcia Graywall is with the Eagle Pass Border Coalition, who's calling for the heavy military and police presence at Shelby Park to go away. Do you think you'll get it back anytime soon? We've seen a lot of problems go away, and so our expectation is that Governor Abbott is going to run out of money, he's going to run out of political oomph, because people will see through his political theater, and they're going to say, hey, $13 billion, billion with a B. We have things that we care about more than we care about hating on asylum seekers. And we think they're going to yank the rug out from under Governor Abbott, and they're going to say, give these poor people their park back. In a statement, a Texas DPS spokesman addressed the drop in illegal crossings here, saying, We attribute the decrease in illegal entries at Shelby Park and Eagle Pass to the presence of Texas DPS and National Guard. It's a much safer location because of the fact that we've been there and providing barriers and consequences to those who cross illegally. In fact, we saw those consequences for ourselves back in January when illegal border crossers were arrested for trespassing into Shelby Park. Immigrants advocates like Garcia Graywall refute the state's claim, saying the drop is due to increased enforcement efforts on the Mexican side of the river. They're being stopped by Mexico before they get to the north. And then every step of the way, it's making it harder and harder to get up here. While some debate the reason, the numbers reflect a more than 90% plunge in migrants trying to cross here. That was KTVT's Ken Molestina reporting out of Fort Worth. The looming concern right now for people in Eagle Pass is whether Texas's SB4, which allows the state to arrest and deport migrants for illegally crossing, whether that's going to be winning an appeal in court and become enforceable. So far, the future of Senate Bill 4, as well as the future of Shelby Park, is unknown. Now to safety concerns with a ride sharing app. We're talking about Uber, and Uber says women using its service will now have more safety options. It says it's added four new features, and here they are for you. There is a pin verification giving riders the option to get a four digit code to make sure they're getting the car correctly. There's the ride share feature, that uh, check feature that's know if a driver goes off course, stops unexpectedly, or ends a trip early. An audio recording feature in the app. Now it can record your trip and secure the encrypted audio on your phone. It isn't accessible to the driver or Uber unless an incident is reported to Uber. Then the company can access it. Drivers can also share their trip with a friend or family member for an added layer of protection and users will have flexibility when it comes to putting all these in place. All of the features can be turned on automatically based on time or location, or you can just turn on some of them. And if you forget to adjust your settings before you get a ride, just tap the blue safety shield while on your trip. That opens up the safety toolkit. Instagram, meantime, taking some steps to crack down on something called teenage sextortion. It's an alarming trend where scammers convince teenagers to send them nude pictures and then tell the teens they'll post the images online unless the victims send money or gift cards. The company announced it's testing new features to curb the crime, including blurring nude images sent in direct messaging and letting users know when they've interacted with somebody who's engaged in financial sextortion. The FBI says it's seen an increase in financial sextortion cases in the recent years, often started by scammers who are overseas. Instagram says this feature should soon be available, though, worldwide. The Idaho man accused of planning a church attack in support of ISIS, now pleading not guilty to a federal terrorism charge. Alexander Scott Mercurio, charged with attempting to provide material support or resources to a designated foreign terrorist organization. The FBI arrested the 18-year-old on Saturday, the day before authorities say he planned to attack a church in Idaho. A jury trial now scheduled for May 28th. The Justice Department says Mercurio faces a maximum penalty of 20 years in federal prison if convicted. O.J. Simpson has died. His family announced his passing on social media this morning. They said he lost his battle with prostate cancer. Surrounded by his children and grandkids, the former NFL star's athletic achievements brought him fame, but they were eclipsed by his 1995 acquittal in the brutal killings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. He lost a multi-million dollar wrongful death suit brought by the families of his ex-wife and Goldman. Simpson later went to jail on several felony charges, including kidnapping and armed robbery. 
A San Antonio neighbor known for its cultural diversity might get a special recognition because of it. And you have a say in the matter. Details coming up after the break. The city of San Antonio wants to celebrate what makes a busy corridor stand out. That's Wurzbach Road, just east of I-10, leading up to the medical center. Businesses from I-10 to Fredericksburg represent countries from the Middle East, North Africa, and Asia. Patty Santos looks at what could become the Silk Road Cultural Heritage District. It's a one-mile stretch exploding with culture. Definitely diverse. Um, diverse. Um, it's busy. <laughs> Down Wurzbach, as, as we mentioned, there are so many um, restaurants and stores uh, from other countries or that represent foods from other countries, so very diverse. This stretch of Wurzbach Road between I-10 and Fredericksburg is where Vietnamese, Indian, and Lebanese businesses thrive. It's, it's, it's a melting pot. Many of the kids who live in this neighborhood attend Colony's North Elementary School. The campus is a miniature representation of what's happening in the community. We have uh, between 20 and 30 languages spoken. Um, most of our emergent bilingual kids are from Afghanistan, so they speak Pashto. Um, after that, I would say we have a uh, group that's growing more and more from the Congo, um, so they speak Swahili. That's why Principal Norma Farrell agrees with the idea to create a cultural heritage district known as Silk Road. What started as a proposal by Councilman Manny Polias in 2022 is being considered by the Office of Historic Preservation. The first of several community meetings happens Thursday. And hopefully they'll say, oh yes, this is my new home, this is where I belong, and San Antonio uh, is validating that. Margaret Constantino with the Center for Refugee Services says the neighborhood has become more diverse in the last decade. She says the designation can create pride for young migrants. To validate that their cultures are indeed important to us. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And if you want to share your opinion, you have a chance. If you can let them know what you think about the Silk Road proposal, the city wants to hear from you tonight at its first community meeting. It starts at 5 o'clock at the Bob Ross Senior Center. That's on Babcock Road. Looking outside with live cam, we are painting a mental picture of this that we may need to use late next week <laughs> when Fiesta gets kicked off. Yes, uh, we'll see how things go. You know, we obviously we need the rain, but uh, we like to fit it in around the Fiesta event. So we'll see if that's how it plays out. We're also unfortunately looking at a switch over from El Nino back to La Nina this summer. That's the way it's trending anyway. And that's not really good news considering where we are rainfall wise. 79 so far today. 52 was the low this morning. The records are 99 and 37, but we'll be above average this afternoon. And even more heat and humidity are on the way this weekend. We'll talk about it coming up. I've decided to, to not talk about Fiesta right now. Not at all. I know he's got to put it on the 70. I'm not going to talk about stuff like that at all because we talked to, we were blue in the face about the eclipse and the well, and it's like, we have some clouds. You know, let, let it happen. Just let it happen. Okay. What do you think? I think I'm just going to put it all in Justin's hands. Okay. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> Oh boy! Wow! And, uh, uh, no, you know, it's leave fine. it up to you, Justin. It's I all was on you. Trying to okay. de-stress Justin, and you just put it all right back on him. But I It'll feel no stress, right? <laughs> It'll be fine. Don't you feel better? I'm. I'm if Justin takes care of this. Light as a feather over here. Well, this is what I will tell you to kind of cover my basis here: is that every year, you know, we had some sort of a weather event during Fiesta, so it's bound to happen. Uh, it's just a matter of timing. And yes, we're not there yet, so we're not going to worry about it just yet. Let's talk about the weekend. The weekend looks good. And let's talk about dogs because everyone loves dogs. Uh, whiskey and brandy. <laughs> good names, by the way. And I would also tell you, man, they look like they're best buds. I mean, they're just chilling, paw on the shoulder, hanging out in the shadows, staying cool. Uh, we appreciate the pictures. So many good ones. It was hard to, you know, we, I just picked it random. But uh, you guys have done a great job submitting pictures of your pets. We appreciate it. It is National Pet Day after all which is why we're showing our four-legged friends today and the cats and the rabbits, as, as we showed earlier. Uh, lows this morning down to 52. When I was driving to work this morning, I saw multiple people with their windows down, even on the freeway, and it's, it's understandable. I mean, uh, temperatures like this, we don't get these every day. And uh, really, we got to kind of savor the moment because we know what's ahead of us here pretty soon. 46, the low in Kerrville, 54, Bernie Stage 54, New Braunfels. 
And 49 Uvalde, 54 Carissa Springs, good news in all of this. We're going to get another morning of it tomorrow. Maybe not quite this cool, but I still think we're down into the mid-50s tomorrow morning. So we can enjoy one more day before moisture increases and those uh, overnight lows start to climb. 79 right now, dew point is at 40, and that number has fallen off thanks to a northerly wind. That's always a good dry wind for us. Uh, and it's anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour, but not as strong as it's been the last couple days. 78 Bernie today, 77 in Kerrville. Those will be some of the cool spots. And then we could go as warm as 86 down there in Pearsall and Carrizo Springs. We're shooting for 83 here in San Antonio with clear skies all day long. We showed you the big picture earlier across the country. I mean, the whole western half of the United States is very, very quiet, at least for now. It is uh, active, though, for the eastern half of the country, and there is rain from Memphis up to Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. This is all going to transition up to the northeast and the main population corridor there. And then, of course, we've got the severe weather that's ongoing across parts of Florida. This is causing some issues. There have been some warnings there, tornadoes and such, and that will quickly push off the east coast today. Then we will turn our attention to the west coast because that's where our next storm system will start to develop and strengthen. By the time we get into Saturday, this low is a pretty powerful one sitting right off the coast of California. We're in the midst of a ridge that's going to keep things fairly quiet this weekend. But this low will try to move a little bit closer as we get into early next week. Now, it pushes a front into Texas, and I think that helps to create some severe weather from the Texas Panhandle into parts of Oklahoma. But a lot of the energy is going to be to the north and away from San Antonio. So I really don't think we see much on Monday. And then as the front gets a little bit closer on Tuesday, uh, maybe a shower, maybe a storm Tuesday morning, but I'm not too confident in that. I'd say about a 20% chance we would be on the very tail end of things. That front kind of scrapes by, brings some slightly drier air in, in here briefly, and then beyond that, uh, we're back into the humidity. So dew point trend over the next uh, several days. Yeah, dew points climb, especially over the weekend and into next week, and we'll see if these dew points fall off a little bit on Tuesday with that front. And then beyond that, it does look like we'll see Somewhat of an active pattern, uh, but yes, we're not going to talk about Fiesta just yet. 84 Saturday, 84 Sunday, so morning fog as moisture returns on Sunday, and then a small chance of rain on Tuesday. Guys, you scared him. You scared him. You don't want to talk about it now. That's true. I'm nervous. scared. <laughs> <laughs> he can join me in the insomnia thing. There you go. All right. For grandparents raising grandchildren. <laughs> There are many challenges that can contribute to their mental health outcomes, and that's why there's a local nonprofit. It's providing support and education to families. Tiffany Huerta shares how this organization is guiding grandparents through those difficult times. Spoke to us. They didn't make us feel guilty or ashamed. They still don't. Rosalina de la Fuente has leaned on this group, Texas grandparents raising grandchildren for several years. Due to unforeseen circumstances, I got my granddaughter at three months. And it was an awakening because it changed me, my life, but for the better. She has received different resources and continues to learn at the fourth annual Healthy Grand Families Conference. There's a lot of us out here that are raising their grandchildren. The event took place Wednesday morning at the Northside Activity Center. We're having state planning, we're having uh, mental health uh, uh, education, so anything that would help them, empower them. Mercedes Bristol, the executive director of Texas Grandparents Raising Grandchildren, says there are about 2,000 grandparents from across Texas involved in this group. There seems to be an increase, especially since the opioid crisis, there was an increase there. The epidemic uh, also increased our, our numbers. The nonprofit offers support groups year round, a great place to connect with other grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. We want them to have hope that they're not alone. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, Fiona's got her pet. His <laughs> name is Mike. We haven't seen a picture yet, though. Have you, yeah. Send us a picture. We K will. KSAT Connect. We're looking smile, at it. Mike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said smile because I'm her pet. Yeah, anyway. Something like that. I, I've been in the doghouse, I'll tell you that. All right. Hey, we were talking about our Fiesta medal, and again, this is what a local artist has taken our Fiesta medal. We're kind of hiding it right now, but this is absolutely beautiful, and if you can dream it, 
he can make it. All right, and speaking of fiesta, how about some fabulous fiesta food? Joining right now is Cindy Guillen from El Catrin, Mexican restaurant and bar. You are cooking up a fiesta brunch, right? Yes, we're making authentic chilaquiles divorciados. And also some very authentic banana pancakes as well, right? Yes, we Ooh. have a banana split waffle right oh here. Oh my at goodness, those. look at that. That's a fiesta in itself. All right, you gotta look your best on fiesta. And that starts with the hair. And Olivia Flores Garcia from Bloom, Bloom Salon is here. Great little tip if you wanna kinda add a little bling, right? Yes, a little bit of eyelash glue just right on your gem and boop. It'll stay all night. Right there, oh, nice. Okay. Hey, River Parade, right around the corner. We're going to be talking yeah. everything about the River It is bigger and better. And than a patriotic ever. theme. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And we're going to play a little game with that. Speaking of games. Oh, yes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Cleto Rodriguez is here. Hello, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> shout out to his dad. That's my shout out to my dad, who's a big fan, by the way. Yes. We, you have a very special comedy show coming up. Yes. It's going to be, we're going to be laughing for charity. We're going to tell you more about it a little later on the show. With a bunch of amateur comedians. That's right. <laughs> Locals. 